we now acknowledge that all people in the human community have fundamental rights. So the next step in the development of this moral and legal evolution is to say, wait a minute, if, if, if we're going to say that people of color uh, have rights just as well as white people have rights and that women have rights just as well as men have rights, it really makes no difference to say that non-human animals uh, don't don't have rights and, and that humans have rights that, that that is a contradiction that is a hypocrisy that animals have these rights just as we have these rights so therefore first of all right guarantees you basic freedoms and liberties and for the non-human animal it's going to be their right to bodily freedom that means we don't experiment on them that means we don't confine them in cages that means we don't hunt them that means that we can't slaughter them for food just because it suits our palate preferences so to have that right is an important guarantee for animals. Now, a lot of people want to raise the question, well, non-human animals and human animals are very different. Animals don't design spaceships. Animals don't write algebra books. Animals don't compose sonatas. Animals don't uh, think about the world on an ethical level than we do. And they want to point out all of these differences between human and non-human animals. But they're missing the point. The point is not what is different among us and them. The point is what is similar between all of us, that we are all animals. We have all evolved from a long continuum of, uh, of natural evolution, that it's a continuum of consciousness and subjectivity and, uh, and of a community of life. And so what really is at issue is what unites us, not what separates us. And what we have, that what we share with the animal world is that we are sentient animals and that we can feel pain and that we know the difference between pleasure and pain, that we have choices, we have preferences, we have a life that is precious to us and we have young family members that are precious to us and that we have wishes and plans and we are subjects of a life. All living animals share this in common and when you get right down to it, why human beings have rights is because they can feel pain and they have these kinds of preferences and, and the animals live in the same kind of world as we do at that level and that's all that is needed for any living being to have rights if you can feel pain and you have preferences then no one ought to ever take, the, take those preferences away from you and inflict pain on you for any reason if you have a right you have a right to your own integrity of your body what what you mean when you say that animals have rights is simply that that they are you're, they are not to take their life invade or, or injure their bodies or deny them their freedom because you think you're going to benefit or you think we're going to benefit uh, the rights the rights of the individual trump the interests uh, that others have, the, the, the benefits that others are going to have. So the notion of an inalienable right, that is a right that can't be taken away or can't be traded off, I mean, yeah, it's can't, it can't be taken from me. Yeah, animals certainly have inalienable rights. What's the relationship yeah. between animal rights and animal yeah. liberation? Animal liberation is a very practical step taken from the philosophy of animal rights. Now a lot of people talk about philosophy rights, but they don't uh, about animal rights, but they don't do animal liberation. Animal liberation is the practical implication of animal rights. That means that we don't just talk about uh, whether animals have rights or not. We know that they have rights because it is well established scientifically and philosophically what kinds of beings they are and and why they should have rights. Now that we know that they have rights. Now, now we're going to start liberating them because they're being kept in cages unjustly. They're being denied their rights. And now our duties are to protect those rights. And one of the key principles in ethics in general is that to be a good moral person, it's not enough just not to do harm. You have to actively do the good. So what people from the animal liberation front are assuming is that it is our duty to actively do good. It's not enough for them not to do harm by being vegans. They try not to do harm to other living animals. They are out to do the good and to do the right. And for them, that means getting every animal out of every cage that they possibly can. How would you answer the charges, and there's a lot of them, that this constitutes terrorism? 
I would say this is the most Orwellian perversion that I, I have ever heard. Because the real terrorists are people who are out there killing animals. The real terrorists are people out there raping the earth. And the people who are saving the animals from the real terrorists, who are compassionate people, who are ethical people, who are willing to sacrifice their freedom for the life of another being, that is not terrorism. That is noble, that is dignified, that is the ethical life at its purest. Moreover, what kind of a terrorist is it that never harms another living being? Because the ALF does not harm other human beings in their actions to save non-human animals. They are informed by a non-violent philosophy, and they adhere to that very scrupulously. And what kind of a terrorist is it that does not have uh, an explicit political agenda to wreak havoc on a society, but rather to raise the moral consciousness of its culture. They are not terrorists. They are fighting the real terrorists. The real terrorists are people in corporations and people running this government.